One of Fred Bear's famous quotes was, a hunt based only on the trophies taken falls far short of what the ultimate goal should be. That's what this hunt was all about. One last adventure in the woods, having some solitude, time to think about the past, time to think about the future, time to think about what I'm gonna do next hunting season from the clues and lessons that I learned on this last trip. Throughout my life, I've always been a bit of an obsessive personality when it comes to whatever sport or thing I'm doing at the time, whether it was tennis in high school or whether it was rock climbing in college or then whitewater kayaking or ice climbing. I just engulf myself in it and live it. And it's brought me all over the world. It's brought me to many cool places. It's introduced me to a lot of cool people. Every one of those things has taught me lessons that I can now apply to each other so I can find ways, creative ways to combine them all. I think that's what's so great about like mountain hunting. You get to combine mountaineering with hunting. Welcome back to another hunting season in Tennessee. This has been a, a mixed season for me. We brought little Barrett Bungard into the world in December. Some of my season was kind of interrupted by that, but that's a good thing. He's home now and season's winding down and I'm in need of just one last little adventure. Hunting, especially with a traditional bow, is it's something you gotta learn to take pleasure in the process. The process is practice. The process is focusing on getting close and getting that shot. Not so much the end result, but how do you put yourself in scenarios to get close? Let's go get close. Let's go have an adventure. You know, Tennessee, on the Cumberland Plateau, we have a lot of steep country, a lot of good steep gradient creeks. It's not full of game, but it's old game. The egg structure is good. The rut behavior, because there's not a lot of does, the bucks are, to me, a little more aggressive. You know, you can rattle them in at the peak time, and they get older, they get bigger, because they're pressured as much. You know, where I'm going, I'm usually never more than a couple miles from a road, but I've never seen people and it's public land, and to find this public land, you can, you can use apps on your phone, like Onyx Maps. Both land owner info for private parcels, but also public parcels that you maybe never even knew were there. I know that until I, I got the app and started searching around my house. Probably opened up 50% new territory I didn't even know I could, I could access, but to get in there, some of it, unless you want to hike hours around, you gotta have the ability and willingness to deal with cliffs, deal with rivers, and also be able to handle the game once you get it down and get it out. But this is this is hunting. This is an adventure when you're getting in and out of these places and you don't see you don't see people. It's all just you in the woods. Cool example of what you can find in some of these places. Now this is we're on a rocky steep ridge. It's one of the few travel corridors going down into a nice big basically a big canyon. So you can see Deer are somewhat limited. You keep your eyes peeled, you'll find start seeing sign like this in places you'd never expect to find it. Alrighty. Like I was saying. Deep stuff keeps people out, but it also dictates where deer go. It's gonna be hard to see from right here, but in this creek wash below, they can't come up this cliff face, so they walk the bottom edge of it. It's almost like a really tall natural lookout or tree stand. And right down there in the bottom, buck rub. This is the kind of terrain you can learn to use in steep country. For me, to get where I wanna go fast, this tree's my friend, Time for me to get a rope out, drop down, then we can continue down this creek wash, get to the river. Now you can see this big funnel we're in. This gets my wind right. I've kept my wind up. If I had to hike in here, I'd have to go around and come back up and blow the whole hunt. So now I'm in the right spot. 
and we can move the wind in our favor. In college, I was guiding rock climbing in Brevard, North Carolina at a summer camp. And the owner of that camp, Dave Truffitt, told me when I, I said I was just how obsessed I was with rock climbing and all these different things that I wanted to do rock climbing. And he pointed out that a true outdoorsman is skilled at a lot of different things and can handle themselves in any situation. And from that point on, I kind of heeded that, those words and decided, yeah, I can be good at this and I can be really good at this, but if I want to be really good, I need to be able to handle myself in any situation that comes. And certainly, adventure hunting can put you in a lot of situations you need to be prepared for and give you more opportunities to be successful. I mean, it's crazy to think of a buck, you know, running up and down terrain like this, but it also makes sense. It's their only kind of way in and out. They're kind of using this wash, and there's some benches, but just to see them moving up through these rocks and hopping. And just such a cool spot to be. I've never seen anybody else in here. Public land. So here we go. As we've come down the creek, we're kind of dropping lower and lower towards the river. The creek's kind of right down there. And there's a little bench, and I don't know if you can see it, but. This is a deer bed here. There's three more back behind me. Kind of hard to see, but that's kind of what you're looking for when you're looking for a bedding area. It's just a matter of figuring out how they're coming and going. We've come up from up high. We're dropping down low. It's getting wetter near the main creek system. Deer use this corridor. Hogs use this corridor. All kind of game uses this corridor. And they've all worn this path down. So we'll get in here and see what we can find right away. Here's a a big, big buck around right here. They're getting into this tight cover. This is a good spot to be able to get close. There we go. Classic hog wall. It's kind of nervous. Cypress flat. It's muddy, but you can really key in on these when you start seeing the trees marked up. If you look, I marked a tree, I marked a tree, I marked a tree. They stay in these low, wetter bottoms. And they'll come in here, they'll drink, and they'll roll, and they'll, they'll leave scent. But it's the trees. This is a, a classic marking post. You can even see where a boar has dug his hit his tusks on it and knocked the bark off. And if you get down and you, and you look low, you can kind of figure out their direction of travel by the way. They're mainly marking a quick white track, but I think the wind's pretty much it is. It's moving right down this creek, so that's good. So the fish we will continue following this trip to the, to the main creek. Then things are going to get sporty, I think. Well, now we've come down, we've hit kind of the, the river bottom. Only so many ways you can deal with a river and getting across it. Last little trick up my sleeve for these kind of situations are these convenient slip over hip boots that ride over your existing boots and let you get across the streams really quick. One of the strange things about the rivers here is that a lot of them are tied into cave systems. There's enough water in the cave underground and a rain comes, the water will make it to the surface and the river will run. If there's not enough water in an underground cave and a big rain comes, even though you think it might be running, it might be bone dry because all the water just went underground into the cave. Sometimes you never know. So I've been out at times exploring 
one river I hit will be bone dry, and the next will be raging. But if you look close as I get into the water, you can even see where game is using this and has it all eroded away. critters box turtle good ecosystems when you see their shells laying around that's pretty neat look there's the bottom this guy either didn't protect himself good enough or just got old but he's been sitting down here who knows how long very cool bring that home let me move up see it very clearly just heading up to this little spine a bunch of wallas down there and here's some classic classic hog wallows boy oh boy They've got it torn up. Look at these trees. I haven't been here too long ago. Some points washed out. This tree is marked. Up the top of my hip. This is so cool in here. It's a funky little pond. Stream. Such a varied terrain in here. Wow, look at that. This tree is rubbed all the way around 360. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, what's so, what's so fun about hunting and isn't it boring? What's boring about this? You don't know what you're gonna find. Everything's new, you're just in here. And the best thing about hunting to me is the constant puzzle. Always these little signs, it's like playing a, the best game of Clue you could possibly imagine. And when you're hunting with a trad bow, it's not just about seeing the animal. It's about finding really up close sign like this, so you can get somewhere close enough to get a shot. Didn't even take a step. Now that is a real trophy. Finally got the shot. And look at that. I don't know what it's gonna score, but I don't care. I'm so stoked with it. What a way to end the day in the Tennessee woods. Time to get to work. So, for the hard work.
I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta get some buddies to even help me get this out of here. I'll get the first load out on my pack tonight. But that is one for the memory bank. Well, ultimately, hunting is about being out there, being in the moment and being in the woods. When you take some time to realize when and where you are, and what's out there with you, you feel alive, you feel, you see what's living in the woods, you feel a part of it. As a way to end the season, I can't think of a, of a better way to, to close out my year and think of, yeah, I got. I got one last shot, and that's all that matters. So I had one last big adventure hunt of the year, and I brought you back a turtle shell. What do you think about that?